Today we're doing exploratory data analysis. Um, your book just calls it EDA a lot. Um, the way we use it is we organize with stem and leaf plots. We don't really have to organize a lot of the stuff for what we're doing today. Um, when we talk about exploratory data analysis, our central tendency that we're going to use is always the median. The measure of variation is our IQR. So we found these guys yesterday, but we'll do them real fast. Um, today. And our graph that we're going to use is our box plot, box and whisker plot, whatever you want to call it is just fine. I guess not a whisker plot. I can't say whisker plot. Box and whisker plot, blocks plot. Okay. So those are things that we're going to use. Um, the box plot definition in your book has um, great big long gross definition that is not necessary for how easy it is to make. Okay, um, It's a graph of the data obtained by drawing a horizontal line from the minimum to Q1, which was the first quartile, drawing a horizontal line from Q3 to the maximum data value, and a drawing a box and the vertical sides pass through Q1 and Q3 with a vertical line inside the box passing through the center, which is Q2. Um, we don't need to write that. That is not crazy. It sounds really gross, but it's not. Okay, so our first step is always going to be to arrange the data in order. So everything we do, that's what we've always had to do. So our first thingy that we have, 30. Okay, I see a 39, 47 then. Okay, 48. Okay, and always just kind of as a quick check, count, make sure we have the same number. Just seriously do that. It saves you so much headache later on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, it should have ten. So ten. Cool. So we don't have to count because it told us we had ten. Okay, so arrange things in order. The next thing we're going to do is to find our median. Okay, so our median is our middle number or our average of the two middle numbers if there's two middle numbers. So I count one off, two off, three off, four off, five off. So what's in the middle of 78 and 89? 83.5. So now that was our median, also called our Q2. Okay, just depending on what you're assuming. So Q1 then is, okay, what's the middle of these guys? 47 is actually right in the middle of that. Q3 will do the same thing on this half. 164. Okay, so we, I did all that then for us. I just wanted us to actually go through the process because it'll take about that long to do. If thingies will click with me. Okay, so then your next step is to make a scale on the x-axis. Okay. Ours goes up to about 300, and it started around 30. Let's just count by 100s, okay, because we like things to be easy as possible. Our next step then, maybe, is to draw a box around our IQR. So our IQR is, remember, interquartile range is Q3 to Q1. Um, I guess IQR would necessarily be like one single number, but we're just actually drawing it from about 47. 164-ish, and we're drawing that box in there. Okay, and these can also be vertical, so I guess sometimes it could be the y-axis if you were doing a vertical one. Okay, then we're making a line at the median. I have like steps nicely done. So a vertical line at the median for 83.5, so that's about 50, let's say that's about 83.5. Oops, that was weird. I don't know what I did that made that come up. Um, draw the lines from the minimum to Q1. So our minimum was 30. So 30 is about there. We're drawing a line. Okay. Some of the things we said, um, your book uses lines. Some people draw actual like vertical lines in at that point. Also do Q3 to the maximum. So my Q3 was that 164 to 296. So all the way over here. 
whoops. Um, so then what else it asks you to do is comment on the shape of the distribution. Okay, so what kind of comments we're looking for are, I have lots of things about comments. So the box and the median. So if we're talking about this middle section here, okay, is this line in the middle of my box? Is my median in the middle of my IQR? It wasn't for this one. If it was in the middle, it's approximately symmetric. If my median is to the left of the center, which this one is to the left, I would call this about the center, to the left of the center, it's positively skewed. Whoops, I didn't click that one, that was weird. If the median is to the right of the center, it would be considered negatively skewed. Okay, and you can talk about um, the lines as well as that, what's happening in the interquartile range if you want to talk about them separately. If the lines, talking about the um, outside lines, not in the IQR lines, um, if they're about the same length, it's approximately symmetric. These ones are not. If the right line is larger, it's positively skewed. If the left line is larger, it's negatively skewed. So here and here, both of our things can, were considered positively skewed. So we can say, yeah, this was a pretty positively skewed. More of the data is on the high end. Okay, We didn't have very many low values is really what that's talking about. Okay, So those are kind of comments that we're looking for. And I'm not changing it yet. Okay, we can also put, I'm not going to show you, but we can put more than one box plot on the same set of axes. Yeah, yeah don't, um, don't try to do this. So if I had another box, don't do that. That would just make me mad. Just be like, okay, let's just come up here because I don't have an axis anyway. So just make it above or below, however you want to. We don't have any labels on this x-axis. It's just like a count or on the y-axis, whatever axis it is that you're not using. Okay, we don't care about anything happening there. Okay, now I can change it. Okay. Um, modified box plots are when we kind of, eh, I don't really want to put the outlier on there because that makes it look really skewed where... Really, I just think I had one weird outlier dude, and we didn't want to take him into account. So this is just, I found this. I tried to just Google some different box plots because your um, book didn't show me very many good ones, at least. Um, so sometimes, remember, like sometimes you'll see a line right here. Sometimes you'll see a line like right there. If there's one on one end, there's one on the other end. Um, so same sort of thing that you're used to seeing, just... Um, the minimum value would not be in the outlier. Okay, that's the only difference is we'd make a spot here and a line there. Maybe I have two outliers in the spot there. I do, I know I do. Are we counting? Don't, don't try to count me. Because you'll never be like infinite. I'll just stop doing that. I'll just ha start having long pauses instead. <laughs> um, so kind of the difference that um, this, well, I'm going to have a long pause instead of so many ums. Um, the difference <laughs> is that like we were doing before. Now I'm really conscious about it. Okay, um, traditional statistics versus exploratory data analysis kind of things. Um, we were using frequency distributions, histograms, mean standard deviations is what we used for the last couple sections. Exploratory data analysis, we'll use stem and leaf plots, box plots, medians, and interquartile range. Is this going to click? Okay. Um, stop. Stop trying to make fun of me. One more thing in there. Uh, median and resistant and interquartile range are resistant. I don't think I, do I usually say it this much? Um, oh, I was, I didn't care. I was making a box scan. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, resistant statistics are not affected so much by outliers. They might be Can we write this down? Uh -huh. affected a little bit, but not as much 
as your mean and standard deviation are going to be. These guys are going to be, yeah, that was nice. Um, <laughs> they're going to be affected a lot. Yeah, pretty much. Lots of ums. Okay, so Don't change it. I'm not changing it. You can just do like IQR, you can just use symbols, mean, sigma, I don't know, I don't think there's a symbol for that, yeah, you could star, that's kind of what I was thinking from that one picture, but you might not know what it meant later on, so I don't know if I would or not. I'm also going to show you next how to do things in the calculator, because we really haven't spent a lot of time doing the calculator. Um, just grab one of mine for right now. But. And calculators are great. Okay? Calculators are great. There is also kind of walk through pretty simple directions on page 170, kind of after the homeworky section. So. The reason why calculators are so nice is that we can just type everything in and it will be all happy and good. Okay? So I'm going to see if this thingy works because I tried to make like a hyperlink that will open something else. So let me go grab it off of my computer. And. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see if it works. Where is my calculator -iness? Okay. So let me see here. It's not going to open anything. Yeah, okay, then it's going to take longer, I guess, is all that's going to happen. Okay, so I'm trying to open this. Oh, yeah, you, look, it can still hear me. Does it still hear me good? That's fancy if it still hears me. Um, and this will just take less time than watching me type in everything. Make a box plot. Let's see how it opens it. Okay, so I'll try to make this smaller so we can kind of read those directions. No, come over here. So, let me go up here and try to press play. So, over here on the side, it has some data points for you to kind of plug in. So, it kind of is walking you through plugging it in, even though it looks like it's already plugged in. So, that's where you guys will go. So, you're going to hit, I kind of want the key pressed history, don't I? So it's just typing in these points, so it didn't work as nice as I wanted it to. Okay, so key press history is I'm going in and I do second, get out of everything before you do anything, so quit, so your second mode. And then in order to actually get into this menu here where we type our data, we need to go to stat, and then basically edit, edit is what that's going to look like. And then just hit enter onto that. Okay, I'm going to play this again so it keeps typing in points. Is that not working? No, not at all? Okay, so I kind of just have it like, oh, yep, so if you have stuff, go up and actually highlight on L1 and push clear. Don't push delete. Delete is bad. Delete is weird. Push clear. Okay, if you push delete, you're probably going to have to come ask me questions. Okay, I don't know what, it, okay, I have weird stuff, it's doing weird stuff. Okay, anyway, I don't care about that, we'll just stop that. Okay, so I have my um, data all typed in, do you guys have your data all typed in, kind of, this stuff? Oh, this was tiny, okay, and then I'm just going to show you. It was tiny, okay, no worry about it. Okay, so I have data typed in, so I went in and I was at like stat, edit, that was where I typed in all that data. Now, in order to actually look at that data, do you guys want to type it in real fast? Are you there? It's bigger right there. Okay, you don't have to type it in in order. If you already have it in order, it doesn't hurt to type it in order. Um, but yeah, it'll do everything for us. Don't care about the order. We can use this for box plots. We can use this for basically everything that we're doing. I'm going to try to zoom in a little bit and see if I can get a better shot of that. Okay, so after I have everything typed in, I quit out of that just because I don't like 
making sure that I'm not going to type in anything weird into my list. So I'm back to my home screen, so I just did second quit. I want to graph it. That's what I want to look at. But when I look at a graph, it just is my normal 10 by 10 window. Um, so we're going to have to do a couple things. We're going to have to make sure the stat plot is on. One way to do that is to go second y equals. Um, if you read it up at the top of it, it says stat plot. I'm going to press enter on the first one. It doesn't really matter if you use the first one or the second one. I'm going to turn stat plot on. I go down and I find the type of graph that I've done. So these are all the different types of graphs that we have been doing. You know, just a point graph. It has, um, I don't know if it tells us, does it use words about what it is? I'll get out of the way so you can see the big screen. Um, histograms, then there's a box plot, and there's another box plot. So the difference in these two box plots is this one kind of has some spots at the end. So that one is going to show you outliers. This one is not going to show you outliers. Okay? So this will just put a line to the min or max. Um, what I generally like to do if I don't know if there's outliers or not is I actually like to do both and then compare them. Okay, so if I, then I want to graph it, but it still is just this normal 10 by 10 thing. Okay, so what I want now to do is I'm going to hit my zoom. I'm going to go find zoom stat. Stat, I'm working with statistics. I'm doing stat plots, so I'm going to go to stat. Okay, it just automatically sizes things for me. I went to Zoom, go down to Zoom Stat. Yep. Did you pick the same box plot thingy that I picked? Okay, so I have like how not the same. Like our left line is like teeny tiny, okay. and then our medium line is over to the right, and then our right line is longer. Weird. Okay. What is... I wonder if I had another point after that. Oh, I had more points that you just couldn't see if you just copied my first screen. So you probably just don't have these four typed in. So that's fine. Probably not. I didn't think about it either. I thought it showed them all too. Okay, so I have um, similar box plots. So what you guys could also do then is we can also look at two of them on top of each other. So I can go back to my stat plots. I want a second box plot, so I go down to my second thingy. I went second y, or yeah, second y equals. It's really blurry. I wish it was a little clearer on here. Turn it on, go down, pick the kind of box plot I want. I'm going to make sure I just, I don't know which one you guys picked, but pick the other one. I'm going to pick my one with outliers now. As soon as I do that, it automatically fills in the X list. My X list, everything was in L1. If you had a second set of data, this is where you could change it. So in order, if I had actual data in L2, which I don't, L just stands for list, I could do second, and then I have to go find L2. L2 is just number two, second L, number two. Okay, it's not what I want, so I'm going to change it back to L1. So I go pick number, nope, not that again, no, second L1. Okay, so now I want to look at that graph again. It put them right on top of each other for me. Oh, mine's okay. mine all weird. You guys probably have outliers because you don't have all the same amount of data. So yeah, yours Our probably changed. Exactly the same, except it put it like a fourth of the way on the oh. line. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah, that's weird. My, oh, did you turn your on, did you turn on? And also your stat plot. Another way to turn your stat plot on is to go into y equals. And you can see up at the top I have highlighted plot 1 and plot 2. That's a really fast way to turn them on. If I wanted to turn that off, I could go up. And if I wanted to turn it off, I can highlight it. Now it's not black anymore. I want to turn it back on. I'm going to go back to plot two, press enter. They're both highlighted. I'm plotting stat points. I'm plotting those list points. Okay, go back to my graph. Okay, everything worked. If I didn't, if I thought maybe I wanted a little bit different view, I could change it here. Let's see if it changes it for a different nine. Mine is on nine. Mine looks exactly the same, so it might change it with two things on there. Might not. Um, 
So yeah, that's how calculators, questions about calculators. Probably lots later on. Okay, are we done? I think so. Really? Yeah. Well, I'm